Scooter Braun does not have Taylor Swift's best interests at heart. And here is actual receipt physical proof. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, if you're new here, and welcome back to Taylor Swift Tuesday. But today's Taylor Swift Tuesday, as you can tell by the title, is going to be basically solely about the craziness that has been happening over the past 72 hours. There's a lot of stuff to dig into. I've got a lot of things to read and talk to you guys about, so I'm not going to delay any further. If this is your first time on my channel, hi, I'm Lauren, make sure you're subscribed. I talk about all things pop culture from a positive light, and Taylor Swift Tuesdays is my thing. It's my thing. The one Taylor Swift Tuesday story that I want to talk about that's not related to this is, remember how in last week's TST I talked about a big announcement coming last Thursday? Well, it was announced that Taylor Swift will be performing at Amazon Prime Day concert next Wednesday, July 10th, and you'll be able to watch her perform live if you are an Amazon Prime member, and it has been rumored that she will not only be performing her two newest songs, but possibly an unheard song from the upcoming Lover album. Very, very exciting. I'm so happy I'm an Amazon Prime member, but yeah, that's literally all the other Taylor news that I have for you, so let's dig right into this Taylor Swift, Scooter Braun, Justin Bieber, Kanye, uh, just all of it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So this past Sunday, June 30th, Scooter Braun announced that his company, Ithaca Holdings, had acquired Big Machine Records. And as you all probably know, Big Machine Records is the record label that Taylor Swift has been with for 15 years, up until the point that she moved labels last November in 2018 to be with Universal Music Group. I think I will just begin with Taylor Swift's statement that she wrote on Tumblr. Right now, I'm gonna read her statement in full, and if you wanted to skip this part, I'll be including some timestamps down below, the things that I'll be talking about just to make it easier for you, because there's, there's a lot to talk about here. Taylor Swift wrote on Tumblr, for years, I asked, pleaded for a chance to own my work. Instead, I was given an opportunity to sign back up to Big Machine Records and earn one album back at a time, one for every new one I turned in. I walked away because I knew once I signed that contract, Scott Borchetta would sell the label, thereby selling me and my future. I had to make the excruciating choice to leave behind my past. Music that I wrote on my bedroom floor and videos I dreamed up and paid for from the money I earned from playing in bars, then clubs, then arenas, then stadiums. Some fun facts about today's news. I learned about Scooter Braun's purchase of my masters as it was announced to the world. All I could think about was the incessant manipulative bullying I've received at his hands for years. Like when Kim Kardashian orchestrated an illegally recorded snippet of a phone call to be leaked, and then Scooter got his two clients together to bully me online about it. See photo. The picture that Taylor Swift included with this post is a screenshot of one of Justin Bieber's Instagram posts where Justin is FaceTiming with Scooter Braun and Kanye West, and Justin put the caption as Taylor Swift, what up? Taylor circled this in red and put, this is Scooter Braun bullying me on social media when I was at my lowest point. He's about to own all the music I've ever made. Or when his client Kanye West organized a revenge porn music video which strips my body naked. Now Scooter has stripped me of my life's work that I wasn't given an opportunity to buy. Essentially, my musical legacy is about to lie in the hands of someone who tried to dismantle it. This is my worst case scenario. This is what happens when you sign a deal at 15 to someone for whom the term loyalty is clearly just a contractual concept. And when that man says music has value, he means its value is beholden to men who had no part in creating it. When I left my masters in Scott's hands, I made peace with the fact that eventually he would sell them. Never in my worst nightmares did I imagine the buyer would be Scooter. Anytime Scott Borchetta has heard the words Scooter Braun escape my lips, it was when I was either crying or trying not to. He knew what he was doing. They both did. Controlling a woman who didn't want to be associated with them in perpetuity. That means forever. Thankfully, I am now signed to a label that believes I should own anything I create. Thankfully, I left my past in Scott's hands and not my future. And hopefully young artists or kids with musical dreams will read this and learn about how to better protect themselves in a negotiation. You deserve to own the art you make. I will always be proud of my past work, but for a healthier option, Lover will be out August 23rd. Sad and grossed out, Taylor Swift. Okay, that is Taylor Swift's full Tumblr post on this, and I before I go into what happened after this, because this was like the craziest day ever, the entire reason that Taylor Swift went out of her way to be in this vulnerable position and call out Scooter Braun was not to bully him, was not to paint herself as the victim. It was to warn every other young artist out there about to sign a record deal to someone to not give away your master's recordings that easily or to just read your contract because there are greedy music executives out there 
that wants to take advantage of young artists, up and coming, the new it girl, the new it guy, whatever your talent may be, there will be someone out there that wants to make money off of you and not fairly compensate you for your work. That is the point of her posting this. I've been hating so much that everyone's like, oh my God, painting yourself as the victim again. <sighs> Before I go on with my opinion, the social media backlash that ensued is probably some of the biggest that I've seen in a very, very long time. So I guess let's just start with just Justin Bieber's response. Justin Bieber went on his Instagram and he posted a throwback photo of him and Taylor together and he wrote a full statement that I'll be putting up here on the screen but I'm only gonna be reading you a few parts that I find the most important. Hey Taylor, first of all, I would like to apologize for posting that hurtful Instagram post. At the time, I thought it was funny, but looking back, it was distasteful and insensitive. I have to be honest though, it was my caption and post that I screenshotted of Scooter and Kanye that said, Taylor Swift, what up? He didn't have anything to do with it and he wasn't even part of the conversation. In all actuality, he was the person who told me not to joke like that. Scooter has had your back since the days you graciously let me open up for you. For you to take it to social media and get people to hate on Scooter isn't fair. What were you trying to accomplish by posting that blog? Seems to me like it was to get sympathy. You also knew that in posting, your fans would go and bully Scooter. Bantering back and forth online, I don't believe solves anything. Neither Scooter or I have anything negative to say about you. We truly want the best for you. I'm gonna stop you there, Justin, because there are so many reasons and things that happened this exact day you posted this that proves that you truly do not have Taylor Swift's best intentions at heart. Here's a tweet that really sums up how I feel about Justin Bieber's apology. For the record, what Justin Bieber did here is gaslighting trying to confuse the narrative and frame Taylor as the problem instead of her bully. He inserts himself into a conversation that doesn't involve him to get brownie points from the abuser and his friends. Shame on him. Here's the thing about Justin Bieber's post. I would like to believe that he is now a changed person versus the kid that he used to be and that maybe he just really doesn't understand that this apology is not an apology. And I mean, he did go back and he deleted that original caption and he apologized for that. But in the rest of his statement, just painting Taylor Swift as the bully in the situation is just so counterproductive. And then guess what? Here's the cherry on top of this. Since that post and as of recording this video, he has posted five more Instagram posts Posts, promoting his new clothing line. In the words of my friend Kate Kennedy, this has scooter levels of PR capitalization at another's expense all over it. I could not agree more. Here's something that happened that not a lot of people are talking about that I want people to talk about. I want you guys to screenshot this and put this everywhere because Scooter Braun does not have Taylor Swift's best interests at heart. And here is actual receipt, physical proof. Before Taylor Swift's statement on Tumblr, Scooter Braun took to his Instagram story to do reposts of people congratulating him on his new $300 million deal that he acquired Big Machine Records. Here's one of the Instagram stories that he reposted on his story and then deleted after Taylor Swift's statement. Dave Grootman thought the best way to congratulate Scooter Braun on his new purchase was to write, when your friend buys Taylor Swift, at Scooter Braun. Scooter Braun then decided to repost this on his Instagram story for everyone to see. Yep, sounds like you have her best interests at heart to me. This is the rudest, most disgusting, slimy thing that I have ever seen. It sucks because up until Sunday, I had always had a really great view of Scooter Braun. I'm not in the industry and I've always just seen really good things that he's done for people, how he turned Justin Bieber's life around, how he's helped Ariana Grande, and I've always really liked him. And then. After this came out on Sunday, I actually heard a lot of people who are actually in the industry be like, no, actually he's done a lot of really shady things before in the past. That sucks to hear. It sucks to hear that someone that you liked and believed in and thought was doing a lot of good in the world actually has a really slimy side to him. I guess that's just what makes people good businessmen sometimes. It, it's so sad to say that. I just have so many things to say about this, but I'm gonna continue reading what else happened. This might be the most infuriating Instagram post that I'm gonna read to you today. Let's see if I can get through all of it. This is an Instagram post by Yael, Scooter Braun's wife. We have yet to hear an actual statement from Scooter on this, minus his Instagram stories that he's been reposting of people congratulating him on his new deal. Yael said this. You were given the opportunity to own your masters. You passed. Interesting that the man you're so grossed out by believed in you more than you believe in yourself. Where do you get off? I don't even know who you are. How dare you? Let's keep going. Girl, who are you to talk about bullying? The world has watched you collect and drop 
friends like wilted flowers. Oh my god, this is just, I, I'm gonna keep going. Don't blame Scooter because Kim caught you in a lie. It's embarrassing, I know, but adults own up to their mistakes. Every part of this just makes my blood boil. Yael, I don't curse on this channel, but you're making me want to. You have no right to sit there and say what it means to be an adult as you post something like this. Scooter was so excited to work and build with you. How embarrassing this temper tantrum is because you didn't get your own way. I want to scream. This makes me so freaking angry. Taylor Swift is standing up for herself. You are a woman, Yael, and you are calling this a temper tantrum. Throughout this entire video, I want to say thank you so much to my friend Kate Kennedy, the creator of the Be There in Five podcast, because she summed up a lot of the things that I'm gonna to talk to you guys about in an easy to understand way. To this particular line, Kate Kennedy said something that I so wholeheartedly agree with. It's beyond my wildest comprehension that we're still dismissing women who are standing up for themselves as having temper tantrums. Oh my God, this this statement that Yael did, I'm it has PR, Scooter Braun written all over it. I'm so sorry that Scooter had to like enlist his wife to fight his battle for him to make this statement. You know that he 100% approved this statement, if not wrote the entire thing himself. And then for her to end it by saying, Tumblr can't fix this, a phone call can. What do you think you're doing right now on Instagram, honey? Did you gain a lot of followers? Are you about to do a brand deal with flat tummy tea with all this newfound fame and clicks that you're getting on your profile? It makes me so angry that you think that you can call this a temper tantrum and make it all about yourself. It's not about you, Yael. I don't know who you are or why you're even speaking up like this. Moving on, let's now talk about Scott Borchetta's statement that he released on the Big Machine website that he called, it's time for some truth. In this lengthy post, Scott Borchetta brought up the fact that Taylor's dad, Scott Swift, has a 4% shareholder stake in the Big Machine's records label. Scott Borchetta claimed that they first alerted all of the shareholders on Thursday, June 20th for an official shareholders call to discuss the deal. Scott Borchetta goes on to say that he sent Taylor Swift a text, her lawyer knew, her dad knew, and that he truly doubts that she woke up to the news when everyone else did. And on that note, Taylor Swift's publicist, Tree Payne, fired back and responded saying, Scott Swift is not on the board of directors and never has been for Big Machine Records. On June 25th, there was a shareholder phone call that Scott Swift did not participate in due to a very strict NDA that bound all shareholders and prohibited any discussion at all without risk of severe penalty. Her dad did not join that call because he did not want to be required to withhold any information from his own daughter. Taylor found out from the news articles when she woke up before seeing any text from Scott Borchetta and he did not call her in advance. Essentially what happened here is that Scott Swift, Taylor's dad, was not on this phone call because if he were to have been on that phone call, he would have been under a strict NDA stating that he could not reveal any of the details to anyone, including Taylor Swift. Scott did not want to be put in that position so he had a lawyer listen in on the conversation for him instead. It's hard for me to know what is truthful here in any of these situations, but I did want to read that statement from Taylor Swift's publicist to you. Scott Borchetta goes on to say in his statement, as you will read, 100% of all Taylor Swift assets were to be transferred to her immediately upon signing the new agreement if Taylor Swift were to join back to Big Machine Records. We were working together on a new type of deal for our new streaming world that was not necessarily tied to albums, but more of a length of time. He then goes on to reveal the text message that he sent Taylor Swift that morning or whenever he might have sent it between Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings Company acquiring Big Machine Records. Oh God, out of the many, many things that Scott Borchetta says in this statement, here's the one that just makes me want to throw my desk across the room. This is the paragraph where he's talking about Scooter Braun, about how he's been a good resource to him. Scooter was never anything but positive about Taylor. He called me directly about Manchester to see if Taylor would participate. She declined. He called me directly to see if Taylor wanted to participate in the Parkland March. She declined. How messed up are your morals and your mind and your thought process and anyone who read this statement that Scott Borchetta put on Big Machine Records website and approved it that you think it's okay to bring up the bombings at Manchester or the Parkland March and that Taylor Swift declined? Are you really trying to use horrific, horrific, terrorism, awful shooting attacks where people lost their lives? I have chills right now even saying this in an effort to tear down Taylor Swift's statement. Where do you get off? I hope that karma comes for you because that is, out of everything you've said in this statement, that to me is so wrong. 
so wrong on every single level for you to even bring that up. It is just not relevant in any way. It's very clear that when you say things like that, Scott Borchetta, that you are just trying to add more fuel to your fire, to I'm right, she's wrong, she's throwing a temper tantrum. It's so transparent and see-through and it's disgusting and you should be very, very ashamed of yourself for having those words utter your mouth at all, let alone everything else that you're putting Taylor Swift and possibly other artists on your label through. Among many other celebrities who just decided to insert themselves in this conversation, which I really think has been the worst part of all of this, whether or not you're supporting Taylor, anytime that you support someone, there's gonna be someone else who just like refutes it. I just, I so wish that people hadn't decided to jump in on this, but at the same time, I love that people are coming to Taylor's defense. This is not one of those times. Demi Lovato decided to insert herself into the conversation and she said, I have dealt with bad people in this industry and Scooter is not one of them. He's a good man. Personally, I'm grateful he came into my life when he did. Please stop dragging people or bullying them. There's enough hate in this world as it is. Y'all can come after me all you want, but I'm always gonna stay loyal to my team. I'm sorry, Demi Lovato. Does your positive experience with Scooter Braun totally invalidate Taylor's negative one? Absolutely not. And I don't understand why you felt the need to come into this conversation. I love Demi Lovato. Don't get me wrong here. I love her. I just, this statement made me very, very upset. Among the many, many celebrities that have come out and supported Taylor Swift are Todrick Hall, Halsey, Brendan Urie, Martha Hunt, Spencer Pratt, Cara Delevingne, and so many more people. Of course, Todrick Hall came to Taylor Swift's rescue. They are best friends. And Todrick was actually a former client of Scooter Braun's and he had a lot to say on Twitter. And you can pause the screen now and read that if you'd like. Now. Let's move into some of the responses of people that are coming to Taylor Swift's support and what they have to say because this is, this is a bigger issue at hand. Halsey wrote on Twitter, Taylor Swift is a huge reason why I always insisted to write my own music. I believed if she did it in a way that made my teeth ache like cold water and my heart swell and my eyes leak, then I should too. Cause that's how to make someone feel. To drag it from the pits of your heart. To offer it on a platter and say, take some, but kindly. She deserves to own the painstaking labor of her heart. It speaks volumes to how far we have to come in the music industry, the way writers are treated, how as an entertainer you are respected, but then as a writer you are walked all over. Even when you are both in one single body, I am standing with her. Iggy Azalea also took to Twitter and said, telling someone about a deal days before it's public means the deal was already done and she never had the opportunity to even make a bid to own her own work. These deals take months to negotiate in long form. I'm now gonna read some parts from my friend Kate Kennedy's Insta story that really summed up all of the details in this. She can afford to buy her catalog. She wasn't allowed. Her former label, Big Machine, that she essentially founded and funded single-handedly sold the label and therefore the rights to all of her past work to Scooter instead, prioritizing a buyer that can scale it and use it how they want to out of a place of greed. For Scott to sell it to him is wild. She made Big Machine Records. They would be nothing without her. She posted that because in that photo, they're all smiling at her expense, trolling her at a low point and being needlessly public and smug about it. It's proof of his behind the scenes work to dismantle her reputation and he will now profit off of her legacy. Scooter is a PR mastermind who allegedly does things like encourage his clients to post illegal recordings, knowing it would benefit Kanye's career and his image. The problem is it sounds like she wasn't offered an option to purchase her masters outright. She was offered to be trapped in another restrictive contract so he could retain the value of her work no matter what. The deal she was offered was for every album she'd make for Big Machine going forward, she'd earn one old one back. Without her work, his label is worth so much less. No matter what, Scott Borchetta wanted to sell it and he was not going to get the price that he wanted without Taylor Swift's master recordings. If she had signed that deal to Big Machine Records, signed back up with them, Scott Borchetta still would have sold the label and she would have entered into a decade of a contract with people she didn't initially do the deal with. Imagine if she was now being represented by Scooter against her will. Scott Borchetta knows it was a garbage, greedy deal designed to put her in an impossible situation where he stood to gain either way. And then she added, don't even get me started with Yael, she needs to take several seats. 
Yes, she does. Her saying, I hope you can learn to love and believe in yourself in the way my husband does, is some nauseating, brainwashed psychobabble that should serve as great inspo for dialogue of wives of captors in Lifetime movies. Also, it's important to distinguish between publishing rights and master rights. I am not an entertainment lawyer, but the publishing rights refer to rights in a musical composition, words, and music. Royalties are divided up between songwriter, producer, publisher, etc. Taylor Swift makes money off of publishing rights and her copyright to the songs she's written can't be taken away. A master recording is the first recording of a song or other sound from which all the later copies are made. A master use license is what you have to pay for in order to use the songs in TV, movies, commercials, etc. So she could create a cover or re-record, which is essentially your own master recording of an existing song. If you create your own version, you no longer need to use the record label's master. She owns the rights to the lyrics, composition, etc. But Scooter now has ownership of her past catalog as they were recorded for her albums and radio. He is the one who gets to decide how her music will be used going forward and is the one that gets paid for it. Basically, Taylor would have had to buy Big Machine to keep these. It was rumored that UMG, her new label, would buy Big Machine, assuming there were contingencies in her contract that would ensure she'd eventually gain ownership back of her masters. I wonder if that's what she thought was happening and she had no idea Scooter was in the running. Kate, I could not agree more. Thank you for explaining it in ways that I understand. Taylor Swift felt the need to talk about her personal story because this is a music industry problem. This is not just a one-time incident. Taylor is basically risking everything right now and putting herself in a vulnerable position. Call it a really, really unpopular opinion about Scooter Braun, Hollywood's golden boy, that has created all these young artists and done so well for them. Taylor Swift is gaining nothing by posting this, and I really, really hate it when people are like, Taylor Swift's doing this for attention. Nobody wants this kind of attention, are you kidding me? Do you not see the hate that she's getting right now for speaking out and speaking up for other young artists who have no idea what a contractual obligation means? This has been going on in the music industry for decades. If you didn't already know this, Prince was one of the very first artists to raise awareness Awareness for artists' rights and fight for creative control of his music. This is something that's just not really talked about and I don't know why. Here's a little history lesson for you. In 1985, Michael Jackson outbid Paul McCartney and purchased the entire Beatles catalog for $47 million. Michael Jackson outbid a Beatle to buy the Beatles catalog. And this was after Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney were friends, had made many songs together and recorded together, performed together, did music videos together. and Michael Michael Jackson still went around Paul McCartney's back and purchased the entire Beatles catalog. I actually read something about copyright law that this year, 2019, is gonna be Paul McCartney's first chance at buying back the Beatles catalog. There's so much greed that goes on in the music industry. She's trying to shed a spotlight on the harsh reality of what goes on behind the scenes in the music industry because she is not an isolated incident. This has been going on for years and it needs to change. And honestly, if there's anyone who can elicit change in the world, let alone the music industry, it is Taylor Swift. Do not forget that Taylor Swift is the one who wrote an open letter to Apple Music and within like three to five hours, Apple Music had changed their entire pricing structure based on a letter that Taylor Swift wrote because she believes that artists deserve to be paid for their work. Oh my God, I'm getting so heated thinking about this because the amount of hate and people that I see being like, why'd you do this, Taylor? This is such a bad move for you, bad PR move. Clearly she doesn't care. She stands up for the greater good. She is already accepted that she's not gonna get her masters, hoping that some young artist out there does not make the same mistake that she did. This has opened up a conversation about why it's so hard for musicians to own their own music, and I don't really know where we go from here. Here's what happens. I see a lot of you Swifties out there saying, oh hey, stop streaming Taylor Swift's music. Let's all have a Google Drive doc where we just share all of her music. That's not what Taylor wants. Taylor obviously wants to be compensated for her work. Everyone who worked on any of her songs deserves to be compensated for that. I understand why you would want to stop streaming Taylor's old music because that is money that goes directly into Scooter Braun's pocket. But if you do stop streaming Taylor Swift songs, Taylor Swift could lose out on the Artist of the Decade Award. There's so many questions and I don't really know where to go from here. The conversation of her re-recording and re-releasing all of her old albums has come up, but I just don't see Taylor Swift doing that. Taylor Swift very much likes to preserve her memories in her songs and I just do not see her re-recording these epic songs of hers. I do have to say this is like a breaking news update that I just got notified about. It's been reported that Scooter Braun has reached out to Taylor Swift to have a private conversation. The site reports that Scooter Braun was shocked by Swift's public reaction on Sunday and is eager to clear the air 
there with the star. This is all just so messy. Here is a prediction of mine. This is a huge backlash and it has sparked a very large conversation that there's no turning back. The wheels are already going with this conversation with music labels, artists all around the world. I bet you anything after today, all musicians out there are digging through their contract to see who actually owns their master recordings. I could see Scooter Braun figuring out some type of deal to sell Taylor Swift back her master recordings after all this backlash. I see that happening because Scooter Braun is a PR mastermind and in his mind, he might be thinking that the way to jump out of this crazy controversy is to make sure that Taylor Swift has some type of stake in her master's recordings while also giving himself a big chunk of sales. That is my prediction. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. There's so many things and thoughts that I have and I have had and I feel like this video of mine, it's not as organized as my Taylor Swift Tuesday normally are because I'm I'm angry. I'm angry, I'm confused. I'm also hopeful that there is some type of resolution to all of this. I understand why Taylor Swift came out and publicly addressed this problem. I really wish that this issue just remained between Taylor Swift and Scooter Braun and Scott Borchetta. I think things got very, very messy when celebrities started either supporting her or not supporting her because it's just bringing Taylor Swift into this situation that she was back in in 2016 where either the world hates her or they love her. And we all know that Taylor Swift is a stronger person because of what happened in the 2016 Snapchat debacle. And I'm proud of her for speaking out about this. I don't know what I want to happen from this. I think I really want Taylor and Scooter to sit down and and talk about this, but I don't know if Taylor Swift wants that. She clearly feels some type of way about him and how he's treated her over the years. And honestly, this has been such a shock to me because like I said in the beginning of the video, I had always had a good impression of Scooter Braun. And the second I saw on his Instagram story that he reposted, jokingly or not, when your friend buys Taylor Swift, it just feeds into the patriarch of the music industry and no amount of money will ever give you full control over Taylor Swift and the intellectual property that she's created and the incredible masterpieces that have come from her and her heart and her breakups and her loves and her losses. I understand how emotional Taylor feels about this. I am emotional about it, clearly. I just, I don't know what I want to come from this. I just know that artists deserve to own their masters. To quote Prince from a 1996 Rolling Stone article, he said, if you don't own your masters, your master owns you. And there are no truer words and I really hope that this can elicit change in the music industry That music executives will step up and stop taking advantage of what's not rightfully theirs because I do believe that music executives like Scott Borchetta are entitled to some cut of the sales because they worked together. Yes, Taylor is the creator. She wrote these songs, but there's also other people that go in and they help distribute it and publish it and edit it and sound mix and make the music videos. And it is a team effort, but Taylor Swift is the main creator. It is her art that you're working on. So it's, it's very hard for me to have a strict opinion, black or white, Scott deserves nothing, Taylor deserves it all, because it just needs to be shared fairly in a way that compensates everyone involved fairly. Guys, this is a live unfolding story and things are changing every single second. I'm gonna keep you guys updated on what's going on the best that I can and I just hope that this pushes musicians to fight harder for their rights and realize what they deserve to own. I also do want to end this video by saying, Swifties, please stop fighting with other fandoms. That is not what Taylor wants. That's not what I want. I don't like seeing Demi Lovato fans, Taylor Swift fans, Justin Bieber fans all fighting with each other. This is so counterproductive. Please just stop. I have seen a lot of people spreading hate about this. It's okay to have an opinion on it, but please just spread it in a nice and constructive way. You don't need to be tearing down other people. You don't know who's on the receiving end, on the other end of that screen. You don't know the kind of day that they had, and you don't know how much your harsh words can really affect someone. So that is where I really want to end this video. I'm going to be including some links down below to some articles that you might also find very interesting about all the things that I talked about today. And ha, oh, I'm I'm not gonna do a Taylor Swift Tuesday shout out in this video today because it's just too somber of an occasion. So don't worry if you participated in the Taylor Swift Tuesday shout out last week, that will carry over onto the next week. Oh my God, so much. I hope that you all are able to just go spread some happiness and positivity in this. And I hope that Taylor Swift's fight is heard and that artists everywhere learn 
their worth and their value because that is what is at stake here. This is probably one of the craziest videos I've ever done, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure you leave it a like and let me know in the comments all of your thoughts to everything that I said because again, these are the facts and I also included my opinion. My opinion might not be your opinion, so let's talk about it down below constructively. Please do not beat each other up. That's the last thing that I want to do is just promote people being negative towards each other. I hope that you're able to learn something in this video. Please make sure you are subscribed to my channel with your post notifications turned on. All right guys, that's all that I have for you today and I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. I love ya. Bye.